before we get started today, I just want to show you something. You know, down in Texas, we have these wild hogs. And um, they, uh, they can do some enormous damage. This is a little work from last night. Uh, these are deep. I mean, if you ran a dog through here, you, they could get injured. So um, a lot of farmers are uh, really uh, anxious to eliminate these things. They, they eat the food that was meant for cattle, and then they come into a field like this that is meant for dog training, nice smooth grass, and they dig it up. It's like you brought a bulldozer in here and twisted it around a few times, and it's quite a large area, and this might be only... It might be only one one animal that can do that. It's quite amazing. So that's just a point of interest. So um, we'll get started in a second. So now that we're finished with our hog discussion, um, another thing that comes up all the time is dogs being collar-wise. They perform different with the collar than without the collar. And, and this actually is a bad, uh, a bad signal because a dog shouldn't act any different when he has the collar on than when he doesn't have it on. It should be a sign to your dog that when the collar goes on, that's a good thing. That means they're going to get what they want, which is to be with you and to work and to, to uh, retrieve, etc. So. Just for um, an experiment, Shadow's still in his crate, I'm going to get him out and then I'm going to reach for the collar and I want you to watch um, how he reacts to it. Is he, does he have his ears back? Is he scared? Is he uh, apprehensive? Does he sit down and kind of slink around like many dogs do when people get their electric collars out? You know, uh, it's a type of conditioning in itself. You know, some hunting dogs, when you reach for any part of your hunting gear, the, the shotgun or, or their vest or anything, they, get, they go nuts because they know they're going to get what they want, which is what they've been conditioned to love, which for our retrievers is retrieving and working with us. So just as a little experiment, I'm going to get Shadow out and reach for the collar and I want to see whether there's some notable reaction. That a boy. Sit. Sit. Ready to go to work here? it. Good. Good boy. So what basically what I saw is a positive reaction. He didn't go nuts, but he didn't have a negative reaction either. So I think that's what you that's what you're looking for. So just to continue a little bit on the collar-wise topic, um, at first you want to have a collar on a dog and off of a dog with no pattern to it. Uh, sometimes when they go, you go in the house, the collar comes on. When you come out, it comes off. When you go airing, it's off or on. And you mix it up. So there doesn't appear to be any reason to have or not to have the collar on. Then uh, later on, there should always be, when you first put the collar on, a lot of excitement so that it's not, okay, pal, see this, this is an electric collar, and you're going to start to behave. We're not going to have that, that concept coming through. It's going to be, hey, guess what? We're going to go training. 
So you want to create that kind of a situation and get your dog in peak power mode like you were going to like he would be at a at a contest at a competition so what you want is to have the collar on and have the dog just as excited as he would be when you're out duck hunting or at a hunt test or at a field trial then you can train for that but if you have a dog that you put the collar on and he's immediately scared he will perform perfectly although at a lackluster pace and you really can't do any training you can only train for what you want which is the in the excitement of a an event you want to train the dog that's going to act like that and i've i know this is a little bit redundant for for you because i've said it so many times but it's crucial you want the dog to be happy when you're working and you want to use that excitement that level as a time when you can teach your new material and do your drills and whatnot. So now what I'm going to do is a little routine training with Shadow as a uh, sort of a finale to, to today. So here we go. I'm going to get a couple marks, buddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Ready? Hey, ready? Fetch, fetch. Good. Sit. Good. Sit. There's a couple of things I cont continuously work on. One is back to home plate, and the other is my single point blind, because that's how I, those are the two things I use to, here, to uh, develop concepts with marks. Heel. Sit. Kennel. He knows to look for the kennel. I just moved it out there and he spotted it and so here we go. Whenever I do these kind of marks, the thing I say last is sit because I want to make sure he stays put. Sit. Okay, so I'd, I do marks many times from the good boy. Okay, here. Sit <coughs> from the crate, the kennel. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, that was a m mistake. I didn't, he, I said kennel in the, you don't have to go yet, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, sit, sit, good, sit. The other thing I like to do is just have him in a spot like this and walk out and, th and sit, throw a mark. When I say kennel to him, it's just like he's excited about it. He loves the idea because he knows what's going to happen. Dogs like to know what's going on. Sit. Okay. Now I'm going to try, and I haven't done this with him, I don't think, before. I'm going to sit, sit, out, sit. I'm going to throw him, sit, throw a mark over there, real obvious, easy mark. And then heel, heel. Come up. Here, sit. Dead bird. Dead bird. Back! I want him to start paying attention to the words that I'm using. Okay. Let's see if he's got a little remembrance here. Heel. Sit. Sit. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Back! Ha <laughs> ha!
Hey, now you're cooking. Very good. Very good. Okay. All right, so now I've done. Let's go. Sit. And I like to end up with a little, some kind of a little double maybe. Sit. Sit. Back. Okay. Good. Here you go. Sit. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Ready? Back. Hey, hey, that's my man. Good. Good boy. Heel, sit, fetch, sit. Now I'm gonna turn him around and I'm just gonna cast him to the blind. Heel, S sit, see how that goes. This is my little morning routine that I do maybe before training. But he gets something like this every day. Ready? Ready? Back! Good! a boy! All right! Very good, very good. Sit, at, at six and a half months. All right, come on, let's go. So that was a sort of a typical little morning session in Caldwell, Texas. Now, please take a look at the blog because I've got all kinds of these little training ideas on there. Uh, one other thing. Um, when you go to the blog, click on the title of the clip, and that will allow you to leave a comment or view other comments. And I, I really encourage you to leave a comment. That gives me information on what I need to be talking about. Have a great day.